When it closed in 1984, the county jail was the oldest operating jail in the state of Florida. In the 91 years it was operational, this building, building witnessed tremendous tragedy and sadness. Such emotion that imprinted itself on the walls of the structure. Even before its closure, ghost stories about the jail circulated throughout the county. In fact, the Nas National Register for Historic Places nomination form mentions that the building has a haunted reputation within the county folklore. The jail was built by Pauley Jail Company on June 5, 1883 at a cost of $7,995. Pauley Jail Company was a St. Louis based company that constructed jails throughout the country. The jail includes a tower suitable for carrying out justice. The, the historians who wrote the National Register nomination weren't sure if executions had actually been conducted within the building. Their local rumors insist that it, that it was fact. Local historian stated in a 2014 article that three people met their fates here. He further notes that one or two of these executions were among the last hangings east of the Mississippi. Gallows were constructed for that purpose outside the building. Notice of a 1916 execution at the jail appeared in the Tallahassee Democrat newspaper. Interestingly, the paper did not use the name of the criminal only addressing him as the murderer of Deputy Rayford Royals, the condemned, while noting that the execution took place on a specially constructed scaffold outside the jail, the article remarks that there was some joy during this mo most somber of occasions. As the fatal movement drew near, Walter Durham, the condemned, laughed and joked with his executioners. Smiling even in the very face of death, he claimed he was right with God and was going yonder. The large crowd was curiously quiet while the ex execution took place. After being allowed to write a brief letter to his parents in Georgia, the noose was adjusted around his neck and Mr. Durham called for one of the ministers to pray with him. That minister, Reverend W.B. Tresca of the local Methodist church, stepped forward to offer a prayer. The sheriff stepped forward and launched the soul of the murderer into eternity. The National Register form offers that Durham's execution may have been swift and public because of the local outcry over Deputy Royal's death. In addition to executions, it is also noted that several other deaths occurred here, including suicides. However, the wife of a deputy sheriff who lived here gave birth to both of her sons in this building adding some moments of happiness to the building's darkest history. Miss Eddie McGuinn said she saw no harm in raising her children in the jail, so as long as they were raised in a good Christian manner. Miss McGuinn said during her stay that the prisoners were fed beef and potato stew, sweet potatoes, peas, beans, various greens, fat back, biscuits, coffee, cornbread, and occasionally peach pie. There were, most of the time, only two meals a day, though sometimes three. Ten aluminum plates and cups were used. Late, later, prisoners were given breakfast, dinner, and for supper, two sandwiches. Later regulations required a 2,000 to 3,000 calorie a day and soup or chili with the sandwiches. Eggs were served occasionally and all food was cooked on a 
wood burning stove. There was not a lot of iced tea since ice was expensive. Judge Hall Adams often ate with the McGinn's, preferring black eyed peas. Viola Robinson was the cook at the time. Although there was a hanging tower at the front of the jail, it may not have ever been used. There was a public hanging September 23, 1895. The first white man hung in Hamilton County was J.B. Norton, witnessed by a crowd. Sheriff Polehill was paid for the gallows, rope, and all necessities. Elbert Jones was also sentenced to hang June 29, 1895, but so far no records have been found of his hanging. In 1895, a windmill was built to pump water for the use of the courthouse and the jail. During 1895, the sheriff was allowed 30 cents a day each for the first five prisoners. Sometimes prisoners were rented out to other counties for work at $2.50 per month for each prisoner. They were also used to work in the county. Jailer M. H. John reported he kept the jail well and prisoners were well fed. Some prisoners escaped by use of saw and it was decided the steel cells were defective. Pauley Jail Company repaired and replaced the cells. In total, the prisoners ate 86 meals a day for $8.60. In October 1905, $71.65 was paid for sewer pipe for the courthouse and the jail. In March 1915, a small porch was added to the front of the jail. Around 1925, a female prisoner, her baby, and crib were housed in the jail for a couple of months. Extra milk was bought for the baby, furnished by W.R. Tutton and Addie Smith. The woman was accused of poisoning her husband. The commissioners allowed her to stay in the jail due to the cold weather. She was not convicted, but was asked to leave the county. In July 1954 and in 1966, alterations and additions were made to the jail. In July 1971, a small two-cell juvenile detention was added. The jail was a fireproof, solid brick, steel, and cement building, except for the portion used for housing the sheriff or deputy. The living quarters had wood floors, 
doors and window frames, etc. In 1932, Miss Hunter, wife of, sh of the sheriff, asked the commissioners for repairs to the living quarters and an addition of a new kitchen and garage. This was done as funds became available. In 1966, a radio communication system was established in the jail. There are no records of all the doctors who helped care for the prisoners, but some of them were doctors Hannah, Thompson, Humphrey, Anderson, McRae, Bullard, and Barnett. In 1893, doctor's fees were $29.40 per month. A new county jail was built in 1982 and, and 1983. It formally opened in 1984 and the old jail was abandoned. Little attention has been given to the upkeep of the jail. The county jail was used longer than any other jail in the state. When the building was abandoned, there were cells for 24 males, 4 females, and 2 juveniles. A bullpen was at the northwest corner upstairs, and a hospital cell was near the center of the jail. When the old jail was built, the county was mostly a pioneer area. There was no electricity, running water, paved roads, automobiles, televisions, ice, or even plumbing. These conveniences came within the next several years, therefore modifications had to be made to the jail. There were never any electric lights in the cell area. There was a railroad and telegraph so coal and other articles could be brought in and important messages could be received.
Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next adventure. Take care. Bye.